Shall we talk about some trends? More specifically, some of the top trends on YouTube right now. If you're not familiar with this series, then hi, my name is Jade Beeson. I have the absolute pleasure of speaking directly to YouTube's culture and trends team about some of the top trends happening on YouTube every single month. So if you are looking to get more views on your content, then this is the video for you. Let's get straight to trend number one. Okay, so trend number one is called what I would wear as. And what I love about these trends is I feel like the names give you a really good clue as to what I'm about to say. So you potentially seen some of these videos before. They're essentially videos where a creator talks about what they would wear as a profession or as someone else, right? Now videos which have what I would wear as in the title have doubled in the last 30 days through to the last 90 days, which basically means that people are participating in this trend more and also that viewers like you and me are consuming this type of content more. Hence the fact that we're calling it a trend. So some examples of this are when creators have produced a what I would wear as a teacher video or what I would wear as a case pop star. And then to take that even further, people who actually are those professions have created content where they basically feed back on other people's posts. So let's say someone created a video saying what I would wear as a content creator, enter Jade. I can create a reaction video where I talk about whether the outfit that they decided to wear is actually an appropriate outfit for a content creator. Obviously like content creators don't really have a wardrobe, so maybe not the best example, but hey, you get my drift. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this trend and what it actually means for you. What I love about this trend is that it's a clear example of how we all have our own experiences and expertise that we can use to create trending content. Literally anyone watching this video can participate in this trend. Whether you're producing a piece of content where you're talking about what you would wear if you were a different profession, or if you actually are that profession and you're reacting to it, there's an opportunity for all of us to participate and an opportunity for all of us to take our own experiences and our own lifestyle and use that to create a trending piece of content. Okay, so trend number two is called music tours coming online. This one is my absolute favorite because there are multiple Beyonce references in it. So <laughs> what this trend is basically referring to is the fact that over the past few months, music tours have really dominated the social media space. Like Beyonce is touring, Taylor Swift is touring, and those two tours have led to a whole range of trending content online. So regardless of whether you are actually able to watch any of those shows in person, Shorts has become a place for fans to share their concert going experience so that even if you weren't at the show, you're still able to experience the vibe and what it was really like from the comfort of your own home. Some of the pieces of content in regards to this trend that I'm sure you've seen include things like the outfit reveals. It includes, you know, Blue Ivy's dance. You know, I'm not gonna sing the song. I'm not gonna sing the song that she dances to, don't worry. But there's been a ton of shorts being created where people are copying Blue Ivy's dance. Also the mute challenge, which I feel like I need to have a word with Beyonce because she didn't do the mute challenge with us when she was in the UK. So. I don't know who I complained to. If anyone has Beyonce's number, hit me up. Anyway, what does this trend mean to you and how are you gonna use it? Well, this trend means that casual content creation is on the rise. In fact, 82% of people have said that they've shared content online over the past 12 months, which is wild. What this rise in participation means is that we've changed what it means to actually become a content creator. Previously, it was this hugely aspirational thing, which you needed a lot of camera gear and you needed all this fancy stuff in order to actually become. But with the rise of casual content creation, it's actually opening the doors for everyone and anyone to be a content creator. Realistically, all you need now is a camera and it doesn't need to be a fancy camera either. It could just be your phone. This trend also means that every cultural moment is becoming an opportunity for us to connect with an audience, even if that audience didn't experience the same cultural moment as us. And in some ways, the latter is of even more importance. By us sharing snippets from some of these incredible moments that we get to experience, we are also enabling other people to experience something similar, which is pretty special. Okay, so this next trend is really shouting out, you know, my UK roots here because it's all about football, also known as soccer by some people. However, I call it football, so we're going to call it football, right? This trend is called football around the world. Now, in case you didn't know, football is actually the most popular sport in the world, which a lot of people don't realize, but it's very much true. And it's become particularly newsworthy in recent months with things like the Women's World Cup, to Messi joining the MLS, and all the way to some of football's top stars heading over to the Saudi Pro League. Now, don't stress, I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about football. Trust me, nobody wants me me to do that. What I am going to talk to you about though is this trend that's happening. There has been more than 240 billion views on football related content so far this year. 240 billion billion. 
This wild amount of views has led to fans engaging with their favorite sport with a few unique ways. One of the most creative ways has been creator-led football events rather than creators just producing content about football. They're actually now creating events where they play football and content is coming from that. A great example of this is Sidemen's charity match. So there's a UK creator collective called Sidemen and they host a charity football match every year. And this year was their fifth charity match. The event sold 62,000 seats in under two hours, which is wild. And at its peak, the live stream reached about 2.5 million views. Now, what does this mean for you and I? Because you're probably listening to this thinking, is Jade telling me that I need to start a charity football match? You could, but there are other things we could do to capitalize on this trend too. What this trend does is provide us with a great case study of how us content creators can turn our content into personal brands, events, and wider businesses, right? Because these group of creators have essentially turned their love of football into a whole nother substantial stream of income. Sports is a great entry point from this. We also see other content creators turning to different sports such as boxing as well. So in terms of what I want you to do, think about what your passion point is within your content because it may not be sports and that's totally okay. Think about what your passion point is and start to think about different ideas of how you can lean into that more with your content and also how you could potentially turn that into a different form of business further into the future. Okay, so this next trend is called a parody track finds multi-format success. Let's break it down. So I don't know if you guys have seen this, but there's essentially this parody like music video, which is all about like 90s hits. It's the brainchild of Carl Gordon and it's called Planet of the Bass. Obviously I'm gonna put some screen recordings on the screen and I'm gonna link to some things below so that you can go and check it out. But essentially it's this really like catchy parody of 90s music hits, specifically like Euro dance hits, right? Now what's interesting about this music video is that the full video managed to rack up 1.8 million views within the first seven days of its launching. And it was marked as a trending video within nine different countries, which is pretty astronomical success. What's even more interesting about this though, is how Kyle, who is the brainchild of this trend, managed to use YouTube shorts to drum up excitement for his longer form music video. What he essentially did was shared a teaser of this parody track and he shared it as a short. Now shorts have this incredible power of reaching a broad audience. And because he utilized shorts in order to do that, it meant that when he dropped his full video, he had a huge audience of people sitting, waiting to watch it, which is why he was able to achieve such impressive stats so quickly after releasing his full video. What does this mean for you and I? Firstly, it's a really good example of how a traditional industry like the music industry is actually starting to utilize multiple different formats in order to drive up anticipation and excitement around longer form music videos, right? They're using shorts as a teaser to drive excitement for a longer form video. You and I can and should be doing the exact same thing. As I mentioned before, shorts have this incredible power of reaching a broader audience. So ask yourself, what is your current YouTube short strategy? If you don't have one, then let's work on getting one. How can you utilize YouTube shorts in order to drive more excitement and drive more traffic to your longer form videos? Last but not least, my final trend is called retro gaming. So what is retro gaming? Well, you can probably guess. Retro gaming is basically the collection and playing of older video games. So YouTube actually have a really thriving community in this niche, and it's made up of creators who play, analyze, and celebrate retro video games, mainly from like the 70s onwards, because realistically, were there even video games before that? I don't know. <laughs> Not only do they celebrate the video games, but they also celebrate the consoles that video games were played on. Does anyone remember like the Game Boy, was it called Glass or Clear? Do you remember like the Clear one? I loved that thing. It's so nostalgic to think back of the time where all of our tech was see-through. Like if you had a computer that was see-through, then you were like killing it at life. How long do we think before that trend comes back? I give it a matter of days. <laughs> now, content regarding these old school video games has been absolutely blowing up recently. In fact, there's been over 1,000 times more uploads of videos related to retro gaming in the first half of this year than there were in the exact same period back in 2007. So obviously interest in retro gaming is definitely on the rise. And it's not just on the rise in one market either. It's gaining popularity in everywhere from South America to Europe to Asia. So what does this mean and why does this matter? Well, even though video games are becoming more and more techy, is that, is that the right word of describing video games? <laughs> more advanced than ever. Even though that is very much the case, we're still finding ourselves going back and looking at some of the video games that we grew up with. This feeds into the power of nostalgia in our content. You heard me earlier reminisce on the Game Boy that I had and it honestly made me feel like some kind of way inside. There is so much power in us going back as well as us paying attention to what we're doing in the future. So is there some way that you can use that in your content? Is there something that you could look back on that you know your audience would enjoy reminiscing on too? 
The emotional power of nostalgia is a powerful, powerful driver when it comes to audience interest. Okay, that is it for this month's trends. If you feel like hanging around, I recommend watching this video. It's actually my recent trends video and I reckon there's still a few trends that are really gaining traction. So it's definitely worth watching. Thank you so much for watching as always. I can't wait to see you in my next video.